<clears throat> so, Sony Records dropped R. Kelly. Hmm. And, you know, it's more what I call fake outrage. And the funny thing is, where where was this drop him when he was on trial back in 2008? Hmm? When the money was flowing, all was good. When the money was flowing, nobody was talking about pulling my songs off his record. Where was Celine Dion at? Where was... Sierra, Pussycat Dolls. Why did they even co-sign to put their records on there? Hmm? <laughs> to me, <clears throat> you know, he fell out with the Illuminati. Basically, he refused to do whatever they want him to do. Because you got to ask yourself, y'all going to wait decades and eras? And you got stuff on somebody. Now you going to act like you got moralists? This is the music business we're talking about. Okay? They ain't never had no morals. They always had this behavior and the higher ups and stuff. So who are they kidding? And he's being used as a pawn and a scapegoat. Now, I don't condone his actions. Never have, never will. However, I do feel that R. Kelly is a musical genius. He's a great artist. And <clears throat> actually be a blessing in the skies to go independent. Because if he hits, he doesn't have to give the lion's share of the money. He cuts out the middleman. And suddenly R. Kelly will look smart. By not having to deal with the racist industry. Sony is just another plantation. Michael Jackson, it's all on YouTube. He called him out and that racist time in Matola. Prince called it a slave, called a plantation. Nothing new. You know, black artists do not get to retire without something. Now, Sony owns the right, has the publishing and the rights, okay? He's been he's with the rug company for 30 plus years. So now all of a sudden he ain't good enough now. Like, oh, and he don't even have a case. And Lifetime Channel is racist. They ain't don't care about no black folks. They're cornball, you know. But now they want to, like, <clears throat> act like they're going to be morally correct. Give me a break. You know, there's some spin doctor. I think when he came out with I Admit Song and he dissed the industry and said it, that was his swan song. So this was just kind of like, this is the formality of what that was all about. But really ask yourself, though. They not they're parting ways because it's politically correct. Not but they still gonna be making cake off of him. Who are you kidding? He's made much bank for the industry. I mean the man is one of the highest selling artists ever. Billboard magazine said about five or six years ago he was the number one uh R and B artist the last twenty five years when you had the chart string. And you think that people aren't gonna come out and buy more? <laughs> Who are you kidding? So they look like they're you know, slam taking them down. But in actuality, they still pimping them. They're still the plantation, still slave mindset. And for all these people out here talking about mute R. Kelly and stuff, well, I'm going to tell you something. If that's how you feel, right, well, then mute the artists they associate with and also mute the record industry. Because let's be realistic. That man didn't work with just about everybody in that business. Mm -hmm. Could be your favorite R&B singer, your favorite pop singer, could be your favorite rapper. Be your favorite gospel artist. This man didn't cross genres and styles and done it decade upon decade, era upon era. Nine times out of ten, he didn't work for your favorite producer. And nine times out of ten, he didn't ghost wrote for somebody that you like. So who is telling who and who is fooling who? This R. Kelly thing is about dollars and cents. Right now, he's an older, seen as irrelevant, not happening artist. So now it's like, okay, now we're going to come unload on him. But they didn't unload on him when Ignition was igniting and had people trapped in the closet and all that. They didn't do nothing then. They didn't do nothing after Aaliyah. They didn't do nothing in the, in the 90s. So now you're going to come after him? <laughs> it's 30 years later. You know, the insulting thing is all these artists trying to pull their tracks from him. Because it makes <clears throat> Lady Gaga, who I do respect as an artist, but it shows me white privilege. And she got selective memory. Like, oh, he's he bad now. Uh, when you needed that hit and you needed to get your urban market, because that rocket was geared towards R&B. She worked with T.I. She had R. Kelly. And when she needed that market, she went to him. But now it ain't fashionable. Because she's trying to get a little Oscar and trying to shine up. Mm -hmm. And Celine Dion, too. Mm -hmm. It ain't fashionable now. You know. Even though her her late husband groomed her at 12. We don't talk about that, though. Okay? But let's just stick to the facts. Okay? See, <clears throat> all these people coming out here are fake. 
The industry's fake and racist. It's a plantation. It's a double standard. Ain't nobody going to come out. Ain't nobody going to boycott Elvis Presley, Jimmy Page, and stuff was said by David Bowie, etc. You know, Jerry Lee Lewis had a little bit of a problem, but he didn't have a lot of a problem. Okay. But let's just call it like what it is. Steven Tyler, too. White folks do not get held to the same. White folks do not get held to the same black folks. Black folks get held like you got to be better than better, and yet you still get treated like second-class citizens and still get treated like you're a slave. And no, I'm not condoning it because you know what? <clears throat> I'll tell you something. I would tell R. Kelly this. You're telling the cat, but you're still black. And if you know that you're black, you know you don't get you, you can. You gotta throw your voice up when you got something to back your ammo up. But you can't give them an inch because this is what they think of you. This is what they show you. And this is what they made of. This is the this is the this is that plantation that's saying you no good to us no more, but we're gonna still take your money. They say you're illiterate, you can't read, you sign your publishing on masters, we own you. We don't need you, but we'll take your money. That's what white folks do to black people in America and these businesses. Yeah, I said it. <clears throat> They've been doing it for over 400 years. And no, I'm not going to sit here and make this where, you know, because R. Kelly has to answer to the Lord. He can't answer nobody on earth because nobody can judge him. But I'm talking about the reality of the plantation, which is in a bigger picture, is the reality. But there's no, there's no black and white necessarily per se. There is black and white in R. Kelly's situation, but not on his actions. But there is a black and white agenda always is in America. Don't get it twisted. But anyway, if he comes up with something that's tight and his fans support him, he'll look he'll look like a genius for being split from them because then you'll have the money. And that's what it's going to come down to. But really, right now, they're telling him, we're not going to gamble on you no more. We're done with you. And you got to go find your own way. But we're going to take your money. We're going to have the rights to you. And he is getting dealt a plantation reality. And people are going to say karma and what have you. But ask yourself, if the rug companies really cared about the victims, would they sell them songs and use them songs to pay off victims and set up a found foundation to really put into perspective? Would they really? Or let's be realistic. If they really wanted to distance themselves, they'd give him his publishing and his money because they didn't cash checks on him. And say, we won't, we'll be completely done with you. See? But they're not going to do that because it makes too much sense to make too much money. So ask yourself, who is really surviving? And now hearing that whole thing about surviving R. Kelly, act like R. Kelly is like Jim Jones or something. Black, they, they, the racism that these, these people put up is, is sad. Ain't nobody surviving R. Kelly. Ain't nobody, R. Kelly ain't put no gun nobody. I hope they're running right that. If you there, you there, and you know what you're dealing with. These parents ought to be ashamed of themselves for pimping their children up there to expect some superstar to come be a superhero, you know. Listen, love the music, love the music. But I wouldn't, you know, I don't get down on cloud for nobody like that. I can love your talent from afar, and I'm good. I don't get caught up in all that that mess. Mm -mm. But I'm selling you. This ain't necessarily a bad thing if he turns it to his own profit. Because who needs that racist industry? Them two-faced phonies in that business is fake. John Legend, fake. Lady Gaga, fake. Celine Dion, fake. They all fake and fraudulent. Chance the Rapper is a clown. Common, too. Yeah. You so-called conscious, and you from Chicago, and you act like, oh, I, I didn't know all of that. I ain't trying to hear all that. You made money off it with him. You tour with him. You dance. Live it up. Be honest with it. Don't fake the funk. Shoot, I got R. Kelly records, and I'm going to keep on listening to him because I love his music and his talent. I don't condone him personally, but his work is great. But see, if we're going to start doing all that, you're going to clean up a whole lot. Then you would then you would read yourself with the whole entire entertainment industry because bet your bottom dollar, he who is paying said person got more skeletons in their closet. They just ain't hit outwardly. But you bet your bottom dollar that's what's up. But I ain't trying to trip about no racist, phony, Sony. They fake bump all that. So that's my take about Sony dropping R. Kelly. Feel free to leave them comments. Hit that subscribe. I'm out. Peace.